Georgia. Do you want to sit with uh, Nolan here? Have you done scoring? So Satya is on the way. He was supposed to score, but he is on the waiting for the bus. Uh, okay. Roger's gonna be with you? Yes. There you go. So Okay. In the mic. And uh, you know. Okay. Sure. Until uh, Satya comes, I'm gonna ask Roger to score. Okay. Say okay, there you go. I've already put in everything. So now we pick the batsman. I think it's gonna be Brendan next, and then it's gonna be Derek next, and then the bowler. You know, you just pick who's gonna start. I think it's probably going to be yeah, Abby and um, Abby, Abby and David. Is it on live already? It'll uh, so here. Here's the stream. It won't start until two here. Two o'clock. Okay. Yeah. There you go. You're ready. Yeah. Good to go. Good. I'm gonna go get lunch. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So Roger, this promises to be an exciting encounter. It's going to be yeah, it's the first final I've seen in uh, Iceland cricket. So first yeah, final. I'm excited to see. Yeah, I mean they're they're two great teams. Um, the Reykjavik team, no doubt, um, has been known for their strength, their all-round strength and performance, uh, yeah, particularly in in the batting sector. Yeah. Um, but it's interesting to note that they are without their talisman batsman today. Really? Yep. Dushan Bandara is not playing today okay. and he has been one of the top performers for them over the years so it'd be interesting to see how they approach today's game how they accumulate a total and their strategy going forward without him today absolutely it's going to be very interesting and the Copafogo team they seem very seems like they're up for it they were here early preparing and getting warmed up and uh, speaking to the captain earlier um, he's quite confident that confident that they can put in a, a good performance today yeah so and the weather is good the weather's maybe the best day it cricket we've had definitely so far, definitely it has been a, a terrible <laughs> uh, weather this season several games has be, had to be postponed but the sun is out uh, a bit of cloud in the sky um, so we should be in for a good day today So opening the batting, so just to let you know, the toss has been taken and Reykjavik has won the toss Who's and has batting? elected to bat. Um, opening the batting for them would be uh, Chamley and Derek. So Derek and Chamley is on strike, is he? Chamley is on strike, I think Chamley will be facing the first over. Find him in the list. That's Derek. Okay. 
guess we can look into that later on. We okay. So we are just about to get on the way. Uh, the Kopovogel puffins are fielding. And in terms of uh, the field, so what do we have? We have a mid on, mid off, uh, three men out of the circle. Derek. Or is it Derek, is it? Yeah. So we have David Cook at point, and the captain on the cover point, Bangri. Keenan at long on and we also have Bala in long off. Abhishek with the first ball. That ball went through quite nicely. Seemed to be quite a bit of bounce in the pitch. No, who's actually on strike? It's Chamley. Chamley's on strike. So it's Chamley and Lakmel that is opening. Lakmel Amaratunga. As he comes in, bowls. That one is short and has been pulled to the mid wicket fence, and that is the first boundary. That's four runs to Chamley. Can you help me try to do it? He's opening. So Lakman and Chamley. But we haven't. So we've got Derek, but I had Derek is not. Okay, we will have to check with uh, the feeling side so that we could come and arrange that. Okay. Here's Abby again with the third delivery. And that one is a little bit wide outside off stump and smeared away towards point. Fielded by Ben and they take a single. Making a bit of changes to the field, and it has been a quick start for the Rikivik team. So we have Lakmal Am Ramatunga um, facing up as they took a single to point. Abby Bowles, that one is going down the leg side, and no run. Abby has made great stride this season as a bowler. He seemed to be more consistent with his length. Um, his run-up seems to be much more sorted out. A lot more rhythm to his approach. It'll be good to see how he get on today as he comes in again and bowls. Again down the leg side that will go for a leg by and that's another run added to the total. Chamley is very good on the short ball, so anything short he will pick it up. Um, so it'd be interesting to see if Abby bowls the same line of the previous three deliveries to him. Abby comes in again and bowled, and that one is played in the air, and he will be caught. He is caught. That one I think got stuck in the pitch a bit. The pace was not there. He went through with the shot and the ball popped a bit and was caught at mid-off. So the Rikivik team lose, loses their first wicket, that is Chamley. How much did Chamley score? Uh, Chamley? Five, yeah. So Chamley goes for five and that's a great start you for the, the was? Was Puffins. The captain Ben? Yeah, he was caught by Ben. I think that's the end of the over as well. 
so shame to lose your first wicket at the end of the first over but that's a great start for the Puffins team uh, next into bat is who do we have next on the list scorer Gotta sort out this scoring. I don't know how to do it. Maybe if you go down to him, it's probably good. So we will have David Cook ball in the second over, and he will be bowling to Lakmal Amara Ranatunga, who is facing up left hand. So we have one fielder off on the leg side on the outer ring. Uh, we also have lo one on long on position. Uh, Bala is now coming in to a leg slip position that is. And David is a very canny boulder. He does not spin the ball a lot but he has a lot of flight um, and very often uh, the batsman uh, misreads the pace of which he's bowling so there's often a lot of miscue from uh, when you're facing David so it would be very interesting to see how they approach David here today and if I'm not mistaken I think he is the leading bowler in, today, in this year's uh, competition so testament again to how well they have not been able to pick him in flight. So there's a slight delay as we sort out uh, the scoring and the scorecards. Still waiting for the official scorer to turn up, he's a bit late. So Bala makes his way back to the long on boundary. So we have three on the outer ring as David comes in and bowls. That one is swung away to the leg side and that will go for four. That was a poor delivery to start with from David. And that's four more to the total. This time is outside off stump and that's been smeared to the square point boundary for four. So that's two ball in the second over and two fours. And the score is? The score is one for 14. One for 14. As the square leg umpire makes his way across to do some adjustments. David in again. Bowls, that's a full toss and it's been smacked again. This time wasn't well timed and was picked up at Jakob by Jakob. David seemed to have not gotten into his rhythm as quickly as he would like as he bowls again. This time it's a better flight to delivery and they take a single. This could be a run out. But the square leg deemed that he was in. It was a close call. But I like the intentions of the Reykjavik team. They seem to be, in addition to the boundaries, they're looking to pick up the singles and that's a good thing. David comes in, bowls, forward defense as he feels, 
Who's the batsman? Uh, Brendan Fernandez. No, Brendan is out. That's a good ball. So we have Lakmal and. We might have to change that. So that's the end of the second over, and the total is. Should be 21. 21 for one after two overs. 21? Is that 21? 41. 14 for one. 14. Excuse my mistake, it's 14 for one after two overs. And we shall have Abhishek continuing with the third over. Lakmal facing. Gets to the top of his mark, turns. Batsman is not ready. And he's on his way. Oh, that was a rising ball that went through very quickly as Abby takes a stumble in his follow through. Seemed to have a lot more bounce at that particular end of the pitch as Abby turns. A little stutter in his run up. Balls down the leg side and that looked like a wide but was not signaled by the umpire. Went down the leg side. Smed, and that will be four. That was a brilliant shot from Lakmal. So that's four more to the total. That one was just a little bit of room outside of stump, allowing Lakmal to um, free his arms, and he did so very well. I think the Puffins team need to tighten up a bit here. Zabi approaches again and bowls. That one is a little bit closer. They appeal, but not out from Empire. It seems to be going down the leg side. Uh, Empire is having a conversation with the captain. I'm not sure what the issue is at the moment. So we have a little delay as they have a discussion. Hi. We are very blessed on this day today because Hi. as we have mentioned earlier, Hi. the weather has not been in our favor for the IPL in 2023. A lot of the games got rained off. Um, so it is it's great that we have a good day today via which to to via which this final can take place uh, the discussion is still going on on field between the captain uh, a square standing and square leg empire vice captain and several players I'm not quite sure what the issue is I'm hoping I will get some feedback on what is being discussed Roger, you with the Puffins, um, how are you seeing the game so far? It's a very fast start from Reykjavik. It is, it is indeed. Puffins have got some work to do to pull it back. Yes. But they picked up an early wicket. So yes, that's, that's true. Fast and they, they also still have one of the better batsmen to come, as in Derek Dinarine. Looks like we are about to get on the way again.
it seems there might be some discussions over noble or maybe oh Abby goes change he's now going over the wicket still a bit of delay Scorers are trying to sort the scoring out. Uh, we're still waiting on the official scorer who probably got held up in traffic, so he's not here as yet. Um, and we also have a delay. There is uh, the official score is, is not here. There is a bit of a mix up with the scoring. So we're also trying to sort out that technical issue. So we have a bit of delay. Scorers at the moment are trying to sort out the score to make sure that is correct. And these are some of the issues we face here with in Iceland cricket. Of course, we are trying to build institutions, um, and at times we struggle with uh, getting scorers. Um, getting officials to officiate the games um, but as they say these are thieving problems so as we grow and develop um, hopefully these things would be get better resolved uh, fair enough to the board we have um, put a lot of infrastructure in place to try and sort of um, combat these issues but of course uh, cricket being such a young game in Iceland um, most of uh, its members are from the expat communities. They have people from the West Indies like myself, uh, you have an Australian, Indian, Pakistani, um, all of whom uh, were familiar with the game before so they do have a good take and understanding uh, of playing the game. Um, but it's just uh, from the infrastructure point of view uh, we are trying to push things forward and as they say it's it's a matter of taking an, a small bite out of the elephant so one step at a time but that said we have improved a lot we have um, come a long way in terms of organization and also in terms of the number of competition that we we hold uh, on a yearly or annual basis So we have a young man here who is. Uh, are you visiting Iceland? I am. Yeah. You are. Okay. So where are you from? Uh, I'm from the United States, New Jersey. Okay. And I understood that you, uh, uh, cricket enthusiast yourself, you you play cricket. So tell me about that. Well, um, uh, my dad kind of had a fascination for cricket, and even though I grew up in the USA. Mm -hmm. I kind of grew up around the sport with my dad watching it, mm -hmm. so naturally I started playing and playing, and then I just picked it up. Oh. Yeah. So what are you, a batter, bowler, all-rounder? Uh, I'm an all-rounder. Sometimes my bowling's better, sometimes my batting's better. Mm -hmm. Right now, I'm shifting towards batting. <laughs> shifting towards batting. Yeah. And why is that? Who's your idol? Do you have a, any specific batting idol? 
Um, yeah, I like Kane Richardson. Mm-hmm. Um, Kane Williamson, my bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also like Kane Richardson. Yeah. Too. Um, uh, who else? Yeah, I like Hardik Pandya. Hardik Pandya. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And is it your first time in Iceland? It is my first time, yeah. Oh, great. How are you liking the place so far? It's absolutely beautiful. Okay. Absolutely beautiful, yeah. And you managed to, to tour the country? I did, yeah. You did. Great. Well, all the best to you in your cricketing career, and I hope you go pretty far. And hopefully, maybe sometime we can entice you to, to maybe move over to Iceland so we can utilize your talent. Definitely. <laughs> So ladies and gentlemen, we still have a delay. It's a long delay. Um, there are some technical issues with the score, which they're trying to sort out at the moment. But all in all here today, it's a beautiful day. A bit cloudy, but white clouds not hanging too low. The sun is out. And a beautiful day for cricket. I think I've just received words that the official score is here so hopefully we'll be able to manage this uh, problem much easier yes he is I can see him making his way across the field we have a few spectators on the site so just to give you a backdrop of the field where we are, there is a campsite at one end and a very beautiful church at the other. Um, we have campers at the moment enjoying the weather and camping, taking their families on vacation. And it's a beautiful site. It's a really beautiful ground. Even more so beautiful um, when the weather is good. Yes, we do. We do like uh, during the winter time, of course, because of the weather conditions. Mm. Um, we do a lot of our training indoors. Um, and the good thing about that is, of course, because of the weather here in Iceland, um, they have these facilities that allows you to be to take the sport on the inside. Mm. So during the winter months, um, winter periods, we train inside. How do you feel uh, the pitch, the flex pitch here is different than the when you guys play indoors? Um, I think the bounce is more true on the flex pitch because of the hardness of the surface that okay. you get. The bounce that you get when we play indoors is a bit a bit spongy. Mm. Um, it still comes on and allows you to, to play your shots. Um, and the bowlers also are also okay. still able to, to sort of bowl on it as per se. Um, but the problem we've had with the flex pitch, I think we've had it now for almost four years, um, thanks to Kit Harris who arranged that for us uh, several years ago. Uh, it's now starting to break up. Um, the ground conditions, ideally you would want the flex pitch to be laid on a, a very solid ground, but often or not uh, during the summer times, the ground is not uh, particularly solid. Mm -hmm. So hence you would get variable bunks on the flex pitch while we're playing outside outdoors during the summer uh, sometimes as I'm sure you could see some of the ball pop earlier some of them went through and some of them died but uh, these are the conditions we we have to put up with and uh, I think over the years the batsmen have uh, and bowlers have adjusted to this um, again it, it it is our hope that we can have a facility or get a facility where we can maybe put in a, an artificial turf mm. Uh, matting that right. will give you a, a, so a more solid base and allow you more consistent bounce um, and of course as you know that will affect the quality of cricket that uh, is being offered to to the players here so we're working on that um, it's it, it takes some time because cricket is not a sort of one of the most popular sports in Iceland compared to football and, and handball as per se mm -hmm. Um, but we're working on that as, as, as the board has been putting in some tremendous work to try and get um, these things in place.
No, but I have to say, it's like absolutely beautiful. The ground. It is. It is. So how's cricket in 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 the U.S.? I mean, what what? The, I guess there are several leagues there now. Yeah, um, there's a couple of professional leagues being uh, created, mm-hmm. and um, I think in a couple of weeks we're gonna have the major league. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. Yes. So stars from all over are gonna. How, how has that been taken on by the the, the great uh, cricket and uh, population of the United States? Mm-hmm. Is that are they, are they excited about this? I think. Some people feel that, you know, by taking in so many outsiders and international stars, it's kind of limiting the U.S. um, cricketers from... uh, Getting the exposure. Exactly, exactly. But uh, I think a lot of people, including me, see it the other way around Mm -hmm. because, um, you know, when you have, like, I don't know, like 13 players, it's there's no real spot pressure yeah right like there's no need to score if you don't score a couple games and you will still be in the team you'll still be in the team exactly so it's a matter of putting a bit of pressure and 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 and, you know sort of not allowing the 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 u.s base players to to sort of just get comfortable for granted yeah yeah okay and also i i also think um the inclusion of the international stars Mm -hmm. it's a good thing it 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 will attract crowds um it would also allow the local players to raise their game there's a lot of benefit that can be had from having these guys in the dressing room as well that's so true yes of course so true. of course and i found it kind of interesting i heard that they're making it six international players to five u.s players on the team so i feel like that's just perfect because you know, you have a couple stars and no one's really going to watch that. But mm-hmm. if you make it more about the star players and let the U.S. players, like, as you said, get in the locker room with them, that'll only build their uh, confidence, cricket. build their cricket. Yeah. And there's a lot of knowledge to be passed on. Yeah. True. Yeah. And of course, I mean, this this is also a revenue thing as well. You know, mm-hmm. the more stars you can attract from the international forum is... is better appeal you'll have for the games so where would these games be played do you have like um because i remember years ago um when i was back in the the west indies i used we Mm -hmm. used to tour go to new new york and new jersey right and we played a couple of game at um like a field similar to this but we also had a game at the yankee stadium as well right that was you know so are most of the games uh, where would these games be played um, do you have specific cricketing facilities? We do. You do. Um, <coughs> so, as anyone in New Jersey or the tri-state area in general knows, our grounds are like pretty crappy. <laughs> you know, we got like pretty bad mats. The grass is like almost. So tell me something. High. Do we have a better ground here than New Jersey? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. For some of your grounds. Yeah. Okay, that's even, one up yeah. to Iceland. Mm-hmm. <laughs> one up to Iceland. So, um, I believe that most of the games will take place in uh, two grounds one in North Carolina and then one in Texas where (laughs) they have proper turfs over there okay yeah oh so a lot of logistics to get the gate the games the players across from North Carolina to Texas exactly yeah yeah Yeah. Yeah. so we still have a big hold up here the players, uh, Bala is trying to sort out the scoring. Uh, most of the players are now off the field. Hopefully we'll be able to get uh, the proceedings back on the way. I'm hoping to get someone to just give me this the scoop on exactly what is causing the delay. So um what brings you here from West Indies? Ah, that's a good question. <laughs> so, i uh, just give you a bit of a background about myself. Um, as you know, I'm from the West Indies, uh, born in St. Vincent. But I pretty much uh, learned my cricket in Antigua. 
um, I migrated from St. Vincent to Antigua uh, many moons ago uh, where I joined the police force there mm. um, but cricket was always my love and my first passion so to speak as a little boy um, as you can imagine in those days in those times uh, cricket was the main sport you know mm. as to say compared to football or basketball or anything else um, so it, it it was in my DNA so yeah. I um, but it was only until I uh, moved to Antigua that I sort of really got into the sport um, started playing the sport and then of course at the time you have um, Antigua is a very small place mm -hmm. but um, they were very sort of rich and powerful uh, in, in terms of the production of, of, of international players yeah. you have um, Richard Richardson, Viv Richards, yeah. as you know, Cleve Joseph. There are so many guys, you know, um, and that's where I, I, my first coach was a gentleman called Taddy Arundel, very tough guy, um, and I always say he's one of the best coach I've ever had in the in the game, and we kind of stressed a lot on physical fitness, you know, we did a lot of that, and I think through that journey I kind of realized get to better realize my potential as per se as a bowler. Bowling always came naturally to me mm -hmm. um, and in a way I took a lot of it for granted until I start I was started being coached by him um, and then after several years there I migrated to the United Kingdom mm -hmm. and that's pretty much where I spent uh, most of my life as per se um, I think I moved to the United Kingdom when I was in my early 20s okay as per se um, and then I met my wife my in I in the UK mm -hmm. um, and about 13 years ago we moved to Iceland so that that is how I you know ended up here mm -hmm. of course when I moved here I I had no clue that cricket was something being played here at mm -hmm. all because it's not something you naturally you know look for because of the weather conditions um, so we have we have Vegetarian. one okay, we have one of the you. we have one of the puffin players here. Um, what is the hold up, Jakob? Uh, there's something to do with the uh, the scoring system. It's faulty. Mm. I think the batters the batter lineup got mixed up, so ah. it says that Chamley is still batting. Okay. Um, and I, I did notice um, before the before the break uh, that is related to the scoring yeah. there was a break on field where the umpire oh, so yeah. was speaking to that Abby. was because the bowler uh, was in the in the line of the, the umpire uh -huh. after the delivery so he was asking him to get off he was the asking field. him to do that he had warned him twice and there was a bit of debate about what the protocol is after that whether it's whether it's a no ball or whether he can take the bowler off mm. or whether um, whether it's just a bowler's decision to get in the line of the umpire and then there's he takes that lbw but the umpire couldn't see if it was a wide okay so it, so i'm guessing that has been resolved now well i hope so um they were the umpires were going to discuss it okay so I, I don't know exactly what happened because basically straight after that the issue with the okay. with the scorecard happened so so yeah, hopefully we we'll, we'll get, we'll get on the way stuff. soon yeah okay you want another one mate i'm good thank you, good? you. So yeah, there you have it. Um, they are still working through the issues with the scorecard and that's caused the delay. So hopefully we will get through that pretty soon and get play back on the way again. Yeah, um, a couple of weeks ago, um, I kept going in the danger zone and the umpire told me, I think after my second or third time he was he told me this is your official warning if you do it again i'm gonna take you off the bowling mm -hmm. so i didn't do it after that but i believe the rule is if you do it after the first official warning it's just you the get bowler taken comes off, off yes yep. of course of course but i mean being a bowler myself is something that you especially if you are bowling around the wicket mm -hmm. uh, to a left-hander or a right-hander um your momentum um, and your body trajectory tend to naturally take you across the wicket. So, again, you have to be pretty conscious of that. Yeah. You know. Definitely. Yeah, I bowl. Um, I bowl outswing. So just getting a little closer to the wicket gives me that. Gives extra you angle. that uh, outswing. Yeah. yeah. 
So are most of the wickets in the UK are they matting natural turf or mm. do you have do you have lo- turf wickets there? No, we mostly play on matting and um you have something called astroturf, it's yes. just cement and then yeah. turf on top. Yeah. And you know there's not many kids that play, so I end up playing with adults pretty mm-hmm. much all the time and um you know, if you bowl anything full it just sits up. Especially on those. So it's pretty slow. Yeah, yeah exactly. it's pretty slow. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you, you mentioned that not many kids play the game. Mm-hmm. Um, is that to say that cricket is is still yet to be introduced into the school system or Oh definitely. Um I fe- I still feel that um I mean the sport is definitely growing, but at the moment it's kind of like you have to be very exposed to the sport in order to want to play it. Mm-hmm. And um, it's kind of getting passed down, like, immigrant-wise. Mm-hmm. And I think there's one state, Maryland. Um, they introduce it to the school system, and you just see a variety of players coming in. Yeah. And I think that's Does that amazing. include local Americans it as does. well? It yes, does. That's great. Yep. Yeah, it still has a ways to go, though. Definitely. Well, I think we are we are pretty much facing the same thing here in Iceland. Mm-hmm. Um, like I previously stated, most of the players from all five teams uh, are from sort of expat. There are you know descendants of expat or right. guys who have migrated uh, to Iceland mm-hmm. from countries like India, Pakistan, uh, Sri Lanka, West Indies, Australia. Um, which is a good thing um, but one of the things we are trying to do is to, to get cricket into the school system right yeah, it's one of the things that the board is working on um, we've had several programs where we have gone to school introduced the game mm-hmm. um, and just show the, the kids the basic of you know just the basic of the game yeah um, that was pretty successful it was pretty good the kids enjoyed it um, so we we're currently hoping to build on that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because I think one of the key foundation of you know getting the sports to be embedded within Iceland is to get the local community involved uh, and interested in the sport. Mm-hmm. You know, try to make it a fun thing. You know, because one of the things like when I speak to a local Icelander and they say, "What do you do?" and I say, "I play cricket," they'll be like, "Oh, that long boring yeah, game." You yeah. know, <laughs> yeah. um, and and so a lot of uh, a lot of them. Uh, for example, are not aware of the T20 format exactly. or the T10 format, mm-hmm. you know. So I think one of the hurdles we, we have to try and cover is to to show them, that, you know, how the, how exciting the sport can be, yeah. you know, because they're kind of based in, um, they're kind of based in their take on the sports on, on the, on the, 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 the test match form, exactly. which is long, yeah. played over five days, mm-hmm. can be boring, there's nothing <laughs> exciting about it. But the moment I think you kind of open them up to um, what the IPL is about, right. for example, you know, the shorter versions of the game, mm-hmm. um, then they kind of step back a bit and say, oh, okay, great. And now, of course, a lot of the excitement to cricket as well comes with the activities, right. the extra activities. Um, for example, you know, watching cricket in the Caribbean is not just about watching the game. It's, it's about having a, having a picnic day, yeah. you know, it's, it's fun. Yeah. It's music, you know, mm-hmm. people are having fun, having picnics, drinking beers, wine, you know, the party stands. Yeah. Um, compared to um, a place like India, I mean, it's completely different. Like, you guys eat, live, and sleep cricket. You know, it's, it's, it's such a sort of passionate game there. Pakistan as well, yeah. you know, Sri Lanka as well, you know. How did you feel about? Um, I heard that West Indies they lost to Scotland, I believe. Oh, it's it's been a very painful experience over the years watching mm-hmm. the decline of West Indies cricket. Yeah. Very, 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 very painful. Um, and you really kind of put your finger on one single factor that you can say this is the reason why. There, there are so many factors that. I think is responsible for the decline mm-hmm. you know at the time when West Indies cricketers or cricket dominated the world scene you know we have we had very a lot of talented players yep. you know um, and I think f- from my perspective I think maybe enough hasn't been done when 
you know, when these guys had left the game, to make sure that the next generation continues. Continues. Yep. You know, and I think the time they r actually realized that it was a little bit too late, and then they started maybe trying to put certain infrastructure in place, certain mm. programs in place. You know, because uh, uh, the gu guys like Richards, uh, Malcolm Marshall, you know, Holding, those guys, you know, they were naturally talented. You know, that's not to say that they didn't work hard at the game as per se, but they also had a passion. They had a passion to play mm. cricket. It, it Cricket meant a lot to them. You know, they were very passionate about representing cricket, you know, towards the Caribbean people. Yeah. Um, and I think we have lost a lot of that passion, you know, for many reasons. Um, at a later stage, because also from an investment point of view, I don't think the, 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 the local governments or the Caribbean community really invested enough money to uh, maintain that or to attract that or to enable the guys, the type of facilities, uh, structure, training, mm -hmm. um, and management system yeah. to enable the game to have continued. That's you right. know, so again, it's a. I think it's a. It's a lot of factors you can point your fingers at. You know, but one of the things that I think that we are also overlooking. You know, in the days of those greats, you know, batsmen bat. They were flamboyant. You know, we we had a flair. We had a way in which we play cricket. We still mm. do. Right. You know, as per se, and I think the younger generation um, only saw that. They only saw the flair, the big hitting, the big hitting. Yeah. You know, the fast style. Um, the fast bowlers only saw, you know, just running up and bowl. Mm. You know, but of course, you know, to be able to do that, you you must have the key fundamentals in place. That's true. And I think a lot of us had had overlooked that. Mm -hmm. You know. A youngster may just want to copy, for example, Malcolm Marshall. They would just want to copy how he bowled because yeah. they felt his action looked great. Mm -hmm. You know, but what else there was to Malcolm Marshall? You know, no one. You know, we, we've missed those things. We've missed those key, key basic fundamentals and it hasn't yeah. been passed on. You know, so uh, there's a lot of factors. Yeah, I think one other thing I saw was... You know, they kind of played those guys until they were very old. They didn't really bring in the younger guys. Like, yeah. even now, they're bowling. I mean, yeah, uh, Fidel Edwards and Darren Bravo, they're like, you know, they've been playing forever. I think. Yeah, a bit, again, I didn't want to touch on this point, but the politics within West Indies cricket is also one of the biggest factors that affects us. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it looks like we are about to resume. Um, Abby will be finishing is over. And he will be bowling to Lakmal. Hopefully there wouldn't be any other delay uh, in today's game and we can move through smoothly now. Stay off the danger zone, Abby. <laughs> we got this. Abby bowls. Dan, he's bowled him. He's bowled him. That one was on middle. Lackmill tried to back away to leg, missed the ball completely, and he's bowled. Okay. The proper score has gone up to the other end. So just check via um, YouTube. Mm -hmm. So I'll do that now. <laughs> so we have uh, the co commentators now joined us. So I have some company here. So Roger, has the scoring been sorted out now? Yeah, I think so. We just had a bit of a technical issue where we'd had the wrong batsman on strike and it took us a while to, to repair it. So we should be back in business now. That's great. So Rikovic has lost uh, their second wicket. Um, coming to the crease now is Derek Denarine, a very stylish uh, batsman, uh, one of the better players. Um, on the Rikovic team, as a matter of fact, one of the better players on the national team. Okay, and the score is 19 for two. Score 19 for two. And I think Abby probably have two more balls in Dover, two balls remaining two in Dover, yeah. two to come. So Derek is a left-handed batsman, times the ball 
very nicely. If anything, he's a little bit sus on the ball that is just outside of Stum going away for him. So it'd be interesting to see how he approached today's. Abby at the top of his mark. Runs in. Balls. That's a wrong leg and clipped off his legs. Feel it by the captain. They got a single. So that's the end of the over. So we are into the fourth over. Third over. So we're into the third over. David Cook lining up to. And David Cook will be bowling the next over, and the score is 20 for 2. David was a little bit off in his first over. Uh, with his line and length. Let's see how he adjusts for his second over. Uh, he will be bowling to Derek. So we have mid on, mid off on the inner circle. As he gets ready to bowl, tosses the ball, comes in, bowls and oh, he tried to sweep that one off of middle, misses completely. Must have been going down leg slightly because he made no contact with that ball, but was not out. Cook balls. Outside off stamp and that one is dropped short of the long on boundary, but it went uh, actually no, signal six. So that was picked up off of middle into the long arm boundary for six. I think one of the things that I, I spoke to David about is varying the, his speed in which he bowls. Seems to have gone away from that a bit as he comes in again for the third ball. And this one is being pulled through mid wicket. That will be another boundary. So David, bowling he's bowling with the wind, of course. Um, he needs to make his adjustment So Derek has his motor in very quickly. David Bowles. Oh, better ball, better flighted, better line, better length. Uh, feel in, feel it by Abby coming in from point, and there is no run. Side off stump, better line, better line there from David. Seems like he's making the adjustment. As Derek settles in, David comes in, rolls again. That was taken on the full on the sweep, fielded at mid wicket boundary, but they complete a single. So it's the end of the over, underscore is Reykjavik 30 for, 30 for 2. 31 for 2. Derek has gotten off to a quick start. I guess he would be the one that would be pushing the scoring as the more accomplished, one of the more accomplished uh, batter in the Reykjavik side. So it'd be interesting to see how he approaches this today. Generally likes to take his time and, and build the innings. Uh, before he expands in the later overs, but he seemed to be on the attack. So we have a change of bowling and we have Keenan coming in to bowl his first over. A very canny bowler. So we have two on the outer ring. We have a cover, mid wicket, mid off, mid on. As Keenan comes into bowl. Bowls to Derek. And Derek clears the front leg and takes that one through the leg side. And it's another boundary. Pretty full ball. So it was just one step to the pitch of the ball. 
um, and putting it through the leg side. Second ball of the over. Keenan balls outside off stump. He tried to cut it and missed completely. And that's a wide signal a wide. Yes, it was the faster ball. But it was a different uh, line as well. It was more outside off stump. Comes in and bowl again. Good ball on a better land. All the batsmen could do is tap it back to the bowler. Comes in and bowl outside off stump and Derek takes that to the leg side. That will be six runs. He's timing the ball sweetly today. Very clean hit. He's a clean strike of the ball, great time of the ball. Small unit but packs a lot of punch, packs a lot of power. So the Reykjavik team is actually motoring along scoring wise. Uh, I think the Puffins will have to try and find a way to sc slow the scoring rate down as Keenan bowls. Short, he worked that off his leg but fielded, no run. Balls again. Swept and swept fine. That will be fielded on the point boundary by the captain Ben, and they take a single. I think this is the last ball of the over. Who's the other batsman? Oh, Lakshima. Balls. Oh, that one popped on him a bit. And all Lakshita could do was sort of poke that up into the leg side. Fortunately for him, it didn't go to hand and drop safely. So that's the end of the over. And at the end of the over, the score is 43 for 2. Reykjavik, 43 for 2. We have a change of bowling um, and coming on to bowl would be Abdul. Could be uh, a handy one if he gets his line and length right and his rhythm. Abdul bowls a uh, fast medium. Comes in to bowl to Lakshita. Bowls and that's working the leg side. by Derek, not Lakshita, my apologies, and they pick up a single. Abdul at the top of his mark, comes in, balls, oh and that beats the bat, that was a beauty. Lakshita with no foot movement, just poking at the ball. That was a quick one and through, through to the keeper. Abdul comes in once again. Balls and that is slash. Through point is going to be fielded. There would only be a single. So what are the puffing chances of uh, winning the final? You guys have prepared all, all year, You're probably one of the teams that did most of the training. I think we're feeling good. It's a, it is a sunny day. It's uh, Hopefully if the weather holds and the grass keeps getting drier, I think we're going to be in with a good chance. Uh, that's great. I mean, it, it also would be great to see because the Reykjavik team, they're, they're a very strong team. 
And I think for the good and benefit of the game, it would be good to see if another team, you know, give them some, some competition on the day. It's important for other teams to climb the mountain. Yes, of and, course. Uh, and, and challenge for the trophies. Yeah. Absolutely. As Abdul comes in again. This time Derek turns it off very stylishly through the mid wicket boundary, Let's feel it, and they take a single. It's one ball to go in the over. Lakshita on strike. As Abdul turns. Ball, that one is full and push back, put the bowler and feel it at mid on. So that's the end of the over. And the score is now 48 for 2. So it's a sunny day, it continues to be sunny, so I am pleased that we are blessed with such a beautiful weather uh, for today's final. So it will be Keenan to continue and he will be bowling to Derek. Denarain. Abby is just coming in on the coming in on the circle as Keenan gets ready to bowl. He bowls and that's on the leg side and swept fine. That would be four runs. The puffin bowler bowlers today haven't quite gotten their line and length right which have afforded the Reykjavik batsmen to scroll freely but they will have to find a way to stem this runs flow. I think we've lost the ball for uh, momentarily shrubs so Raj come and tell me come and give me a little bit of background into yourself and how you get involved in cricket or interested in cricket uh, well I grew up in Australia so cricket's a national sport there uh, and I moved to Iceland about five years ago mm -hmm. and found out about cricket in Iceland only only about two years ago. So it's been uh, it's been exciting playing with the Puffins for the last season. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, Australia. So I mean, me being British, or you know, it's, it's, it's Ashes rivalry in the commentary yeah, box yeah. there, isn't it? What are you thinking about the, the game, the test that's going on so far? Should we get a score update for them? Yeah, no, better no. get the score update. <laughs> Last I looked, England was nine down, so it uh, may not be a good score. Let's have a look. Alright, so they still need 55 runs. They've got one wicket in hand. Tongue and Anderson at the crease. Okay, They've got so Ben Stokes out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Stokes got 100 and 150, I think. Ah. It's a great guy, great knock. Yeah, fantastic. But, uh, well, there's still hope, you know, as they say, it's not over until the fat lady sings. That's exactly it. And it's, they have 60 overs, so they have plenty of overs in hand. If they can hold their wicket. A skin and balls again. That's a better ball. All Derek can do is tuck that into mid on where Cook feels. Better line from Keenan. Oh, he bowls. That one was full and that been smashed through the onside. That's another four. The Puffins bowlers are, are lacking consistency in their bowling. 
the line and length has been all over the place so far at the start of the sentence and they need to pull this back and pull it back quickly or else they'll be chasing a very mammoth total in this final 2023 IPL final Keenan gathers himself comes into ball again oh that's a better delivery as a matter of fact he's bowled him he's bowled him that one kept low that's a huge wicket that one kept low Derek was on the back foot the ball didn't bounce a lot uh, and that struck him right in front and the score is now 54 for 3 now this makes it very interesting as well because uh, like I said Derek was one of the premier batsmen um, but he's now gone and they're also playing without Dushan Bandara today who have been reported to have been ill so he's not in today's squad so it'd be interesting to see how the Reykjavik team go about the rest of their innings I always felt on this wicket you have to be on your front foot because the bounce is so inconsistent most of the time a lot of the teams practice indoors so yes of course Yeah, that's the point I was just going to make. You just have to prepare yourself that you, you, one may pop and you have to maybe take one for the team. You know. <laughs> so the next batsman is who's in? to hit the wicket. So we have Prabhat and Lakshita batting for the Reykjavik. Keenan continues, twirl of the arm, ball that's full and he jammed down on that at the last moment and that's a better line from Keenan. That's the end of the over, it's an excellent over and the score is 54 for 3. So we'll have Abdul continuing. I think this would be his second over. No, the church end. Yes. So Abdul is bowling from the harbour end. And left to right. right to left. I think left to right. Yeah. As Abdul prepares to bowl to Lakshita. Jumps, delivers. Oh, he was trying to play that on the onside, but the ball was outside off stump, so I ended up dragging the shot. Just some attention given to the batsman to tighten his pads by the keeper. very good sportsmanship I must say I mean there, there, there's quite a good uh, team spirit among all the teams it's a good thing as Abdul balls oh that one was short struck him but I think it struck him high above the pads Lakshita has the potential to be a very good batsman um, but yeah, I think he just needs to play more, you know, believe in himself a little bit more, build his confidence as Abdul bowls. Oh, again, that one rises on him very sharply, fielded by Keenan coming in from mid on. This is just watching the play, that this is what plagues all the batsmen. Yeah. Is that they, they often play back when they should be playing forward. Yes. Yeah. I think a 
a lot of it comes down to sort of reading the game on the day and understanding the, the how the pitch is playing to decide whether you play on the back foot or whether you play on the front foot as he bowls wide outside off stump um, swung at that widely fielded by they will get over throws as the ball was fielded it's deflected off the stumps Ball was fielded by Jakob at cover, thrown to the stump, broke it and it took a single. As he bowls again, oh it's a nice shot off the pads, uh, they will get one, fielded by Ben, that was a nice shot. We still have uh, Lackmill, the captain, to come in. He can be explosive. So if these two can put on a good total, I think at the latter end of the overs we could we'd be in for a treat. Oh, and that one is smashed. Beautiful shot. Nice flow of the bat. That one was pitched up, and Lakshita went through over cover or over mid on, and that was four. That was a beautiful shot. And that there is a perfect example why I said I think he could be a very good batsman. And he just needs to sort of build, believe in himself and build his confidence. Yes, yeah. It's always difficult for batsmen very early in their innings. They're yes. Not, not quite sure of the conditions. Yes. As the fielders get around, it looks like Keenan will be continuing. Oh no, new bowler, Sai. No, so there's a change of bowler. It will be Sai. We're in number 93. And he will be bowled in from the church end. Sai as a bowler, if he gets into a good rhythm, he could be very uh, lethal. Sometimes I have a bit of problem with his run-up. Um, let's hope he can sort that out today. So mid on, mid off, point, cover. One man and the midwick kick boundary. As Sai gets ready to bowl to Prabat. Short run up. Bowls. Oh, that's tailing down leg. Tried to work it on the onside but was missed by Prabat. Sai balls to Prabhat. Oh, that's a wide ball. They thought they would have gone for a single, but they didn't. So we have with us here Derek Denarain. Um Derek, talk to us. What happened with that ball? It just keep low. <laughs> it went underneath the ball. Okay. So <laughs> Ball kept close, says Derek. As he pulled, that one is outside of stump. Uh, fielded there by Bala. That was good. I think this is a very tricky part of the game. And Rikovic needs to really consolidate now and try to build a good score. The side comes in, balls. Down the leg side, flicked. Fielded, well fielded by Abby, but not well backed up there and they will get a single. That's poor feeling from the puff inside. As Lakshita prepares to face Sai. As he bowls on middle, smeared away through a square leg, fielded, and they take a single. This has been a good over from Sai so far. As Prabhat faces up. 
comes into ball. Oh, and that's a full toss, and that's been pulled to the square leg boundary, but fielded, and they complete a single. That shot, that ball should have been put away for a boundary. Crossing over from boards, and uh, sadly England has fallen short. Australia wins by 45 runs. Oh. Sign from Churchill. So I'm sure I'm going to be getting it, and this could be out. This could be out, and it is. It is. That ball was short outside off stump, and he tried to pull it to the leg side. Unfortunately, not timing it properly, and was caught and uh, in a ring by Keenan. So Rikovic lose their fourth wicket with the score on what's the score 64 for four so i have an aussie sitting next to me here so i'm gonna hear it all day today about the us losing today's ashes test match yeah but baseball will come into play yeah you know <laughs> we can watch you can watch. <laughs> we'll get it right. We'll get it right. We'll get it right. It is going to be aggressive. We haven't seen a lot of aggressiveness in no. this It's really only one person who gets on top of the ball. It's a concerted effort. To no. I actually think it's a good way to, um, because test cricket is, you know, it's just losing some of its oomph, you know. And, you know, I was speaking to um, a colleague of mine who was visiting us here from New Jersey. And I was talking to him about, you know, when we speak to local Icelanders about cricket, they, they always think it's a boring game, long, boring game, you know. And, and that's because they, they know or they heard about test cricket. It's over five days. It's boring, you know. There's nothing to to excite you, you know. As, as an Englishman and Australian myself, we know that every ball is a battle. And yeah. And, like the bowling team only has to win ten battles. And the battle See, we we will know that because we come from a, a cricket. We come from cricketing nations where yeah, cricket is yeah. sort of embedded in our soul. But for a country like Iceland or a country that is not familiar with the game of cricket, these are the things you would have to sort of, you know put out to them and get them to understand the strategy the strategy so of course of course the, uh, the long term mental game but I, I can tell you Roger I will speak to you at the end of the Ashes series and we, we will see where ba baseball is <laughs> I think it's uh, I think there is something to it yeah it's something you would apply maybe not from the outset and it may not be broadcast that you have to do that yeah Yes. Or, or after drinks, or, but yeah, to, to, to say this is what we're going to do from the get go. Yeah. It's a dangerous thing. So let's see how the team plans. So exactly. As Abdul comes in, balls. First ball. I think he's bowled him. I think he's bowled him. That was a quick delivery. He played across the line. The shot was not there and hit the top of middle and leg. So the puff inside. Are actually getting on top now. Five down for 64. Five for 64. That was an excellent piece of bowling by Abdul. Yeah, top of leg stuff. Skim the bills. It's a bill skimmer. So I think that was Prabhat was bowled. Yeah. So. Yes. So we have the captain coming in, coming in at a crucial junction. Coming in at a crucial junction, I think he will have to spend some time at the crease rebuilding. He will. Yeah, I'm not sure if he has the temperament to do that because you know he's an attacking player. So it'd be interesting to see. Yes, he has to play the captain's knock today. Puffins team have done their homework well. They will know that he's strung outside of stump uh, towards gully and point. He will work a lot of balls down there. It's one of his favourite shots. So it'd be interesting to see the field that they set for him. Third slip 
is is acknowledging his strength there yeah. and they're looking to stop it. And Abdul prepares to come in, come in again. Top of his mark. Balls. Oh, that was a good ball. Seems to be getting a lot of movements from that end. Pushing into it and, uh, and, and using that. To well, it's, it's not a strong breeze as what we are accustomed no, to here. And it's, yeah, it's a little bit gusty. As Abdul turns, prepares to bowl to Lakmal once more. Comes in, bowls. And there's his favorite shot, dab down, and it's a single. I think the Puffin team has done their homework well, so they're plugging that gap. But it's one of his favourite shots. Who's the next batsman there? Um, I'm sorry, I can't read it. As comes in once more. Ball. Ooh! And I think he's bowled him. He's bowled him, this time hitting the top of off. The batsman was playing back. Again, what we spoke about, you know, deciding whether to play forward or be on the front foot or the back foot. This time he chose to be on the back foot. The ball was too quick for him. Sneak between bat and pad and clip the top of off. So the Reykjavik team, yes, it's very quick arm. So the ball comes off very, you know, quicker than you expected. So the Rikovic team are in trouble because uh, from what I know of the Puffins bat batsmen, this is not a total they would be frightened about. So 65 for 6. 65 for 6. How many overs? How many overs? How many overs gone? How many overs gone? Overs. We're in the tenth over. Had that confirmed. Abdul continues to keep things tight for the Puffins team. As he bowls. Oh, that one is outside off stump. Captain tried to dab it down through a point, but misses. So the tent over completed. We are at the halfway point. Sixty-four for six, and I think the Reykjavik team at this point will be looking to consolidate things, build a partnership, and try to add a significant score here for the Puffins to defend. So we will have Sai continuing. And he's going to be starting the eleventh over, and he will be bowling to Lakmal Bandara. in balls and that that's down the leg side and it's a wide
as he bowls again. This time it's better in line and they steal a single as the fielders were very slow to respond to that ball. They've been on their heels, eh? They have been on their heels. I think one of the things that I've noticed with all of the teams, while the bowler is running up to ball, the fielders are very flat footed. You know, they're not walking in. As Cybos. Oh, this one is dabbed nicely through point, fielded nicely there by David, but they completed a single. will keep doing this until he gets his eye in, eyes in and then I think he will go for it in the latter overs as Sai prepares the ball again. Oh and it's got through him! Oh! Actually it went through everything. I thought that that one cannoned into to middle and leg but he missed it completely. Yes. That was a narrow escape there for Lakmal. Asai balls again. Oh, try to guide that again. Misses completely. And the Puffins team are on top now. It's interesting the different ways the batsmen use to try and get themselves going. Get their eye in. Yes. Yeah. That's a good ball right in the block hole, tailing in from off stump into leg. So cramp the batsman for room. And this is really good bowling from Sai here. The puffin steam are actually just turning the knots, turning the screws. They still have uh, nine overs. We're into the eleventh over now, so we st there's still time for the Reykjavik team to put on a formidable total. As Sai prepares the ball, jumps, delivers. Again, that's guided, but the fielder is there. I think Lakmar will have to find uh, another escape shot because they've actually blocked uh, his option there. Yeah, yeah. get around we see David in cover we have a mid wicket cover cover point Bala is going behind square Keenan long on as Abdul continues ball that one has popped up into the offside feel it nicely by Jakob that was good solid play keeping a front foot forward yes keeping your head down right in behind the ball but I still think I mean the stride forward can be a little bit more convincing as well it's you know Zabdul prepares to go in again jumps and delivers oh he had no clue about that one. Very elegant French cut. He <laughs> 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 nicely described here by Roger an elegant French cut. Yes. Yes. So we have uh, Abby in place to cut off that getaway shot from Lackmill. Balor on the long on Bangri, Jakob in cover, mid on, mid wicket. Balls, uh, it's a good delivery. Yes. He actually got a little bit squared up there. Oh, he ended up playing the shot with, you know, his full face and he kept it under control. But if that ball moves slightly, he will be in some trouble as he bowls again. Oh, he swang at that one. Swang at that one and misses completely. So things are getting tighter here in the 2023 IPL final, where we have Reykjavik playing the Puffins. 
Africa Fit got off to a very quick start but we have now the Puffin has pulled things back very nicely as Abdul prepares the ball again jumps delivers oh that one is feel it by David very nicely and it was quite well played yes Since Abdul has uh, come into attack, he's really pulled the scoring rate back. He's bowling very in control and economically as he bowls again. Oh, and that one is hoisted. Is he going to be out? No, it's six. That's a beautiful shot from Lakmal. That one was hoisted over mid on boundary for six. Score moves on to 75 for 6, and I think we're this should be the start of the 12th over. Next over, uh, this would be interested. I think this is a very smart move because I'm not sure how well Lakmal reads him. Uh, slow ball, and Lakmal is very good at he prefers space, so it'd be interesting to see how he moves his feet to the flight and guile of David. It is. So we have a man on the point, a man behind square, one covering the outer ring of the cover point boundary, long on, and Keenan in a very straight position behind the wicket keeper. That one is made through the cover point and fielded by the captain Ben and they take a single. Uh, it's Sammy and Lackmel. Sammy can be an explosive batter. And he takes that. Uh, bounce, one bounce, well fielded by Keenan. And they complete a single. David seems to have lowered his um, flight in the second spell. Much flatter. Oh, that's popped it in the air, will land safely, and they take a single. Just in between the fielders there. So that's the end of the over, and the score is now 78 for 6. So Reykjavik, I think, is uh, starting to rebuild and get a partnership going. They are, they've steadied the ship. Haven't they? they have steadied the ship. These two guys can be explosives, so, so it'll be interesting to see how the next couple of overs unfolds. Seven or eight overs, so plenty of time. Still yeah. Play. Yeah. I think the main focus will be to, to bat out the 20 overs. We'll bat out the 20 overs. There's nothing like scoreboard pressure once the runs is already scored. It's, right. you know. Yeah. 
So there's a change of ends here for Keenan. He's now coming from the harbour end. Started his spell at the church then. And he will be bowling to Lackmel. So we have a long on, long off, cover, point, mid wicket, as Keenan bowls. Ooh, that one did not bounce at all, and Lackmel was going for his favourite shot there. You gotta be careful that he doesn't drag on from outside of stump. As Keenan comes in to bowl again. And he bowls. And he pulls that one square. It'll be a long chase for Ben. Will he stop it? Yes, he's done well actually. Fumbled the ball a bit, which allowed the, the batsman to come back for a second run. third ball As he bowls short tries to paddle it around the corner I think that will be a leg by fielded by Abdul Keenan balls. Oh, that's a good line, good length. Tuck up the batsman a bit. All he could do is shuffle it into the onside. Oh, he went back and tried to turn that to the onside. That one rushed him, but it was going down. The leg side. So the big news here today is that England has lost a second test in the Ashes. My co-commentator would be very happy as a as an Aussie. It brings a smile, face. Brings a smile to his face, of course. <laughs> yeah. So we have some visitors here in the commentary box. What's your name? So David will continue and he will be bowling to Lackmill. Again, similar feel as the previous owner. Just some running fix uh, being offered there by uh, the umpire. This will be David's third over as he bowls to Lackmill. Bowls and he cuts that but straight to point fielded by Abby. There is no run. He plays. He is. He plays the shot, but there's no power to the shot. It's footwork, yeah. And Lakmal pulls that one, drags it into the leg side, but well fielded on the square point boundary there. They take a single. Yeah. The slug sweep would be a good option here as David bowls to Sammy. Bowls that's a full toss. Oh, and he misses it completely. That should have been a six, but he misses it completely. In the meantime, they completed a bye. David continues. Bowls. Outside off stump, drag to the leg side. Again, I think I think they're trying to hit the ball too hard rather than trying to time the ball uh, in the open gaps. Picked up a single, one added to the score as David bowls again. Another full toss and sla Sammy slams that one down the field. Well fielded by Keenan, and they pick up another single. This is 
been a good over from David so far. He has adjusted his speed uh, and length as he bowls again. Another full toss pulled into the leg side. That one may beat the boundary. Well fielded, well supported there as well. And they only managed to complete a single. Or oh, actually two. That was great support feeling there by the Puffins. Yeah, they are. They're, they're building, I mean, it's going slowly, but they're building a partnership. The score is now 89 for 6. And this should be the start of the 13th over. Keenan to continue and he will be bowling to Lackmull. So we are into the 15th over as Keenan continues to bowl to Lackmull. Balls pull that once from outside of stump, it will be fielded by Ben in the square boundary. Puffin bowlers are not allowing the Reykjavik batman anything to to hit their ball in a line outside off stump as that one was played, beat the keeper, being chased by Abdul, the batsman, that should be two. That is poor running. That is poor running. That should have been two runs. There was no urgency in the first run. I guess the captain wanted to strike. Still holding a line outside off stump comes in. Bowls. And that one is swung. He's gonna be caught. Beautifully caught there. That was a beautiful catch. Who took the catch there? I think that's Harry. Harry took a beautiful catch there. Again, the line outside off stump seems to be troubling the Reykjavik bowlers. They're dragging the ball from outside off stump to the leg side, of course not timing it. And I think we're into the tail of the Reykjavik team now, as Sadun walks in to bat. And the score is now 91 for 7. I was 15.2, 15.3. I think what 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 I've what I've noticed here is that the the crossbow bat shots, you know, there's the the puffins teams are bowling a line outside of some, but the rick of a batsman is just planting their feet straight down the wicket and dragging the ball to leg where there are open spaces on the offside. As Keenan comes in and bowls again, oh, he swang and swang and he's been given out. Is it LBW or bold? It looks like he was bold. That one was straight, uh, Sadun swang, swung hard, misses it completely, and it rocketed into the off stump. So the Puffins uh, keeping a tight squeeze uh, on this Reykjavik inning. Yes, he was bold. I think the Reykjavik team now should look to bat through the innings at least. To, that should be the plan. We still have Sammy in the wicket and he can be explosive. So it'd be interesting to see how they manage the remainder of their innings. Keenan is on a hat trick as he comes in again to bowl. That one was played nicely back to the bowler. That was actually a good foot movement. Very good foot movement. As Keenan bowls. 
balls again. Oh, he swung that and he's gonna be caught. He was caught. So the Puffins team are tightening the screws here and I think the Reykjavik team is falling apart. 91 for 9. So one more wicket to go. Good bowl. That's good bowling by Keenan. I think that that's also one of the good things uh, that says a lot about the balance on the Puffins team because you have Keenan, you also have David, both who are very good bowlers, and then you have Abby, um, Abdul, and Sai as medium paces, and you also have um, Jakob as well, who haven't needed to, uh, they didn't need to use him today. Uh, that says a lot. So the last batsman come in. Also Bala. Also and Bala as well, yes, yes. So it's a very very well balanced team. The puffins. It's good to have bowling options. Yeah. So Sai will continue. Nine wickets have fallen. Now uh, we have Sammy on strike. And I think here now Sammy's probably just gonna go for it. As Sai bowls. Sammy slaps it back to him and he's caught. That's a tame dismissal and the end of the Reykjavik innings. That was a very good bowling performance uh, by the Puffins. Equally, you can say it's a bad batting performance by the Reykjavik team. No, yeah, and definitely. I think it was brought about by the, the Puffins bowling. They yeah. were very tired yeah. and kept the, the scoring down. The field I mean, they got off to a quick start, I did, but, then um, but the Puffins pulled, pulled back. it back, yeah. pulled it back really well. A couple of quick wickets. Yes. And congratulations to the Puffins as well for, for maintaining consistency through yeah. the Well, I think, I think they deserve it. You guys deserve it, to be honest, Raj, because um, being one of the better organized teams, and you've started your summer, your winter training, you know, long before any of before the other Christmas. teams, before <laughs> Christmas. So I guess um, you can say you're now reaping the fruits of the hard work we that are. you put in. Yes, definitely. So we have a break in the innings now because uh, the Reykjavik team has now been bowled out. I will try and see if I can get a word with uh, the captain of the Puffins. So walking to us towards the commentary box, we have Ben, the captain, and the coach, Keenan. Ben, great performance. Uh, did it go as you bet? Yeah, we managed to get them out for a lot less runs um, than his pass score on this wicket, sub 100. We had a bit of a dull period in the middle where we went a bit flat, lost a bit of our momentum, but we came back really strong. One of the team talks I said in the middle was, let's finish strong, let's finish quick, and they did exactly that, so I'm proud yeah. of the boys. So they started very quickly at that point. Um, did you just still manage to keep uh, your strategy and your plans going forward? Yeah, we kept the same strategy that we had coming into the game and it paid off. They did start storing some quick runs. We did a few little adjustments in terms of where the fielders were, more square, a bit more fine. But in terms of the overall strategy, we kept it the same. Yeah, I felt you guys bowled very well. And coach, um, as I said to, to, to Roger earlier, the, the Puffins team is one of the teams that is better organized, I can say. And also you, you started preparing for this competition at a very early stage. You're one of the first teams to start training, um, both in the gym and also on the skill-based set of things. Did it go to plan? 
Oh yeah, definitely. It didn't go to plan. Um, we started in uh, January, if I'm, not, if I'm not mistaken. But in the end of it, I think the boys put 100% in the training sessions. Um, everybody gives it their all, basically. We worked hard on uh, the errors that we made last season. And we kind of corrected them now. And this is where we are at the moment. Great. So you have a total to chase. Um, scoreboard pressure is scoreboard pressure. Each of the five overs for each of the uh, batsmen. Each of the batsmen know their roles. The top four know their roles. Middle order know their roles, and the tail enders, if they get in, know their roles. So we're going to um, forget about the scoreboard, keep that strategy, and uh, it's paid off for us in the wins we've had so far in the season. So let's let's keep going. What works? So it's all about identifying points to focus on and actually focusing on those points. Yeah, exactly that. Exactly that. Um, I mean, you've got to play the game as it comes, but you can set a strategy out and, and deliver that strategy, whatever the conditions are. So we're, we're trying that. And paying off so far. In the season. Thank you, gentlemen, and I wish you best of luck in your reply. And let's see where we go. Thank you.
So welcome back to the 2023 IPL Finals between the Puffins and the Reykjavik Vikings. We are about to start the reply of the Puffins innings. Roger, you guys should be, you should, you should get over the line with this. Not a very big total. It's only 90 odd to, to get, mm -hmm. but we're still going to actually get the runs. Yeah. <laughs> so that's true. They're not too confident or overconfident. So they'll need to make sure they add themselves in. Well, I think, um, as one of the guys says, if you bat 20 overs, you should be able to get this. But there's no rush. And play straight. Because we notice a lot of the um, Rickenberg bats when they, they play across the line. And that's what goes a lot of the wins. But the wind picking up now, it's changed mm -hmm. direction, so it's coming from behind us beyond the church end. And it only also takes a couple of quick wickets to put you under pressure. So we have uh, opening the ball and looks like it's going to be per bat. And batting for the Puffins is uh, Bala. Who's the batsman on the Probably Ravi. That's Bala and Ravi. I think he came in as the impact player for um, Abdul. That's per bat balls. Oh, and that's a loose one. First one is wide. Ravi would be quick. No. Rabat is a very good bowler, a uh, very consistent line and length. But of course, they have a low total, so he would be under a bit of a pressure as he bowls. Better on line, and that is smashed over cover point. It will bounce and kick on. Well fielded. And they complete two. side for a single. Baller to take a strike. Baller is a very technically correct player so you'll be looking to play the ball straight as Prabhat bowls. Smashed well driven and well fielded in the covers there by Captain Lackmal. But it was a good looking shot, yeah. They need to be positive in the field. Stopping those runs, stopping the boundaries. Rabbit balls again. Outside off stump smash and oh burst for his hands and that will kick on for four. That was sloppy fielding there by the captain. He's very disappointed, but I think he didn't time his jump correctly, otherwise that would have been snapped up and that should have been the first wicket. So it was a short ball outside of stump, slapped through the covers and burst through the hand of uh, Lakmal, the captain. As bad balls. This time he's on middle and played very watchfully there. But that is more adjustment of some adjustment by the keeper. As actually a photographer on the field, he's been asked to go beyond the boundary. <laughs> uh, the fun in cricket, as Baba prepares the ball again. And he bowls, that's a full toss. Uh, again, not nicely timed. There could be a run out here. Well supported, backed up in the field. Yeah, that being a no ball. Well, it should be. It looked as if it was over shoulder height, but. Probably bowls again. Oh, that one was smoked. Uh, didn't time it as well as I thought he had. Had. And 
could only manage to get a single. That might have come off the bottom of the bat because, he, yeah, yeah. So we have the first over completed. We just get you the score. And at the end of the first over, the puffins are 10 without loss. So Reykjavik will have to try and limit the scoring in these uh, the power play overs because if they don't, this would be a very short innings. So correction to the score, it's now 12 without loss. Uh, the second over from the um, harbour end, I think this is going to be bowled by Lakmal, the captain of the Reykjavik team. And he will be bowling to Bala. I think anything short, uh, Bala is going to take him apart. Likewise, you have to you have to bowl a, a good length to Bala, where he's not sure yeah, where he's not sure whether to go forward or, or go back. Yes, he is. He is. He's very still at the crease. Head position is very great. As the balls try to sweep that down the leg side, that would be a wide. Lackman, Lackman can be a canny bowler as well. So it's a good, it's a good contest here, as he bowls. Bala plays across that one. Well fielded by Prabat. Who's in a sort of mid on position? Balls again. Again down the leg side, that will be another wide. So he's bowling. The wind is taking the ball in that direction, so he needs to adjust his line slightly more outside off stump. As he bowls again. Balls, better line, and that one is pushed on through the cover, fielded there by Sadun, and they take a single. Oh, that's a good ball, and he's given out. That one was on line. I think the batsman is indicating that he actually hit it. Uh, it did sound a bit muddy from where we are up here. Um, but the umpire's decision is final, and he's been given out. But that was a straight ball. I'm not sure if he hit it, but he definitely... I think it was definitely going onto the stumps. Squared him up. He did. He did. He was right in front. So we have the captain Ben uh, walk into the crease, and at the fall of the first over, the score is 16 without loss. Oh, that was actually Bala. It's actually Bala given out. This this match can become interesting if the if the Rickfick team managed to pick up a couple of quick wickets. This this could become very interesting game. So we have the captain to continue, um, and facing now is Ben, the captain. Yes, he will. As the Rickfick team try to set the field and get everyone in place. Lakmal comes over the wicket, balls down the leg side, uh, they scramble a single, that will be leg buys. So as we speak the sun is making its way under the clouds, it's getting a little bit chillier and that might be it for the sun today Roger, what do you think? Sure about the wind is picking up as well. As Lackmal comes.
comes in and bowls. Oh, that's a good ball. Sort of popped in on him a bit. I think it caught him on his finger. Yes, it does. To my father, if I could see someone is um, making good use of the wind, they're flying their kite. And he bowls a great shot that was whipped off the leg side. Square boundary, and that's a runaway for four. That's a beautiful shot. It's an excellent area to score on this field. Yes, it is. It's a beautiful shot there by Ravi. So the score is 21 for 1. Twenty-one for one after three overs, or two point two overs. Then take the strike. Yeah, I'm really the strike. Yeah. Oh, that was yeah. That's the end of the over. So it, this is the beginning of the third over. And the new bowler we have is who's that bowler? Who's that? We'll get the name of the bullet to you shortly. So Ben is on strike. Four on the leg side. So as he comes in around the wicket and balls, floated up, uh, plates to mid on, full toss, no run. Yeah. So we have a mid on, mid off, cover point as he bowls, and that was swung to the leg side. That one will go to the boundary for four, that will beat the fielder. Great shot that was a great shot. So Ben is off the mark with the boundary. So one added to the total. It often feels like in these games the, the team that bowls the fewest extras. Yeah, often end up winning the game. Oh, that one kept low and beat the keeper as well. Managed to come through for a single. For a run, extra. Ravi on strike, change of angle. As the bowler runs in the ball. Has been short and pulled. Well fielded by Derek. There could be a run out here. Uh, did he strike the wicket? No, he didn't. Bashman was safe. So good running by the Puffins team. Good aggressive running. Uh, the non strike over was alert to the call and was able to make his ground. As a Batman come around the wicket again. Bowls to Ben. Ben play get back on the back foot and punches that uh, in front of him and feel it by Sadun. So comes in again. Bowls. Ah, uh, he went across the line. He went across the line and missed everything. I uh, missed the keeper as well, so they managed to come through for an extra run. That's the end of the over. And 29 for one. 29 for one. Some good positive batting so far. It has. It has. I mean, it's a small total, uh, and you don't want to be get. You don't want to get caught just uh, poking around trying to achieve it. So you need to approach it in a positive way, and I think they have done that so far. Yeah. And they 
still have a very good bowler in Sadun to come on. So let's see. Yeah, that's the one over here. Yeah. Lakmal will continue. He's bowling to Ben. As he bowls, comes forward and pushes that one back to the bowler. I think Rikovic can also look to focus on increasing the dot balls because that builds pressure as well. It does. As Lakmal continues. Balls outside off stump. He slaps that. He's going to be fielded by Lakmal Amara. Uh, Tunga square after wicket and they managed to come through for a single. by Prabhat and the batsman completed two. That's uh, two more added to the total. A good positive running again. Good positive running. So I think it's now 30 for one. After how many offers we have? board is a bit of a distance away from us so never so often we have to check the over oh and that one rise very sharply outside of stump just off a good length that's a good line there by uh, Lakmal he bowls to Ravi again Lakmal bowls comes forward that again whips it through square uh, fielded there by Prabhat and a complete two runs. So good running by the Puffins team. They're pushing the score. And we're now into the fourth over. We are now into the fourth over. 29 runs scored. So we're at the start of the fourth over. Fourth over to be begin. I think we can see Sadun is coming on to bowl. Can be very economical bowler. He bowls a full length. No, it's not. Uh, the previous bowler is going to continue. So Reykjavik has chosen to go with the slow option. And bent to take strike. Yeah. and that is not the line to bold that is not the line to bowl that was a loose ball and that was swung away behind point for four yeah I could see the captain rising to the occasion um, no doubt he is pleased and happy to be in the final so he's making uh, use of this opportunity It's not a big total that the Reykjavik team has to play with, so they, they have to be very tight with their lines and length and try to restrict the scoring as much as possible. I know it's difficult because of the field restriction, but that was a that was a poor ball. As he bowls again, that's a better ball. That was a better ball. Pitched on a good line, square the batsman up, turning into leg. It's a bit of bounce. Bold again. And that's up in the air. Top edge. He could be caught. He's dropped. 
he's dropped. Unfortunately, the fielder did not position himself on the ball, went over his head, and they managed to complete three. Well, if the Reykjavik team is going to um, put up a fight here, they will have to take they'll have to take their chances, and that was a bit of a poor feeling there by Lakmal. As we see the square leg umpire change his sights, ball a switch to uh, around the wicket, and he bowls, um, forced it to the offside, fielded there, no run. It's very effective, yeah. The body language of the Reykjavik team seems very down. Step old again, wide outside off stump, he had a flash at that, and it's been signal wide. They're very flat in the field. It's been a poor performance today, I don't know if the, the absence of um, Dushan Bandara has affected them, no doubt it has, as he bowls again. Better line, turned into the onside, quick single, fielder slipped. The Reykjavik team needs to believe um, that they can do it and, 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 and just change their body language as he bowls again. Oh, that was a shot taken the inside half of the bat, squirted out into the square, uh, fielded there by Prabhat, and it's only a single. That's the end of the over. 44 for and the score is 44 for one. It is a fast run rate. I, th I think they've approached this in a with a positive mindset, which is, I think, what they should do. Absolutely, yeah. So, Lakmal will continue. Uh, this should be his third over. And Captain Ben of the Puffins to face. So, he's coming over the wicket. So, we have cover. Square cover and behind, men behind. That was a short ball, just turned into the leg side, fielded by the keeper, and no run. Full ball, smeared over cover point. That will be four. That was great timing, a great shot. Free swing of the bat, and that's poor bowling, I must say. That was a full ball, begging to be hit, and it was struck nicely. shot over long on and that has run away for four that was a beautiful shot he played through the line and that was a beautiful shot so the puffins is running away with the score looks like they're gonna make a very easy meal of this today and it would, this would be a great achievement for the puffin if they have to win this final yes it has been a while 
went for the same shot again but that ball was not there for that shot it was not full enough and that's the end of Dover and I think Sadun is gonna come on to bowl now so at the end of the fifth six over the score is now 53 for one I think one of the the good thing I mean on paper the the Reykjavik team is the strongest of all the, the five teams we have in the competition so this would be a good boost for all of the other teams as well if, if you if you are to go on and win the, the this T20 competition today that might shake up how the, uh, how the national teams yes so of course <laughs> well that that being said the national team has already been selected and most of the the, the you know players on the Reykjavik team are in the national team a sad on balls oh that's a good ball and a good length um, I think one thing you can rely on Sadun on he bowls a very good length yes. um, very full most of the time so you have to play him very straight tall bowler as he bowls that's down the leg side that will be a wide signal wide by the umpire Ben drives, uh, dragging that one on the onside. It's a single picked up by Dinarine on the mid on Does position. Across the line, but he got away with it. Yes. So Sadun is going to stay around the wicket to the right hand uh, Ravi the as he bit. bowls. Oh, and Ravi lifts that one. It's going to drop safe. It's going to be a single. Uh, the ball. They were thinking of a second, but decided against it. Yeah. Ravi's a bit of fox. <laughs> Ravi's playing very straight as he bowls to Ben now. Oh, Ben gets back and pushes that one to mid on, and they scramble a single. I think I I think the Rikovic team, in an effort to protect the boundaries the gaps I, I think they need to consider how they're field placing here because there are lots of easy singles lots of gaps as Sadun bowls against the Ravi Ravi tries to go over the top of that one misses outside off stamp and collected by the keeper yes yeah rushing for his overs oh that one's just tapped into the one side I think all in all, this has been a pretty good over by um, Sadun. At least restricted the scoring a bit. Let's see if he can continue with this line. As he bowls. Oh, drives that through the cover. Square cover comes in and picks up, and they pick up another single. We can hear the Puffins team getting all animated and excited at the moment because I think I think they see that the, 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 the they're getting close to the target oh, well it's a shame I, I I would have wanted to have seen Dushan here because uh, you know how destructive he can be as a batsman um, you know and and that could have meant that the Reykjavik team would have posted a, a bigger target I think you're right it, it's um it, it we haven't Kaipo hasn't won yet but it makes it a little bit hollow now if we didn't play yeah. the best team we could have played yes so it's, um, maybe there's still something there to be yeah to be argued over the, the well you you can you it's uh, it's the role of the dice because there are several games that got rained off yeah, so uh, this really this this it's season. been a very poor season I think it's one of the worst win uh, summer I think that the teams <laughs> three or four games on. yes exactly as the captain looks like he's bowling out and Ravi chips that one to mid on and takes a single struck the hit the stump and a direct throw but the batsman was in there's been quite a few fielders hit the stump today yeah very promising I think what's good to see also is that the, the puffin side is not just relying on boundaries they're taking their singles sharp singles so they put in the feel under pressure Slackmail changes over the wicket to Ben, comes in and bowls. Short, he tries to pull that around the corner but misses completely. In a way, I think we, um, you've got to run the runs to. You've got to pick up your 
single to rotate also to rotate the strike and keep the scoreboard ticking as Lachman bowls again short coming into Ben he just taps that into the onside and take a single well you can afford to do that because you have a very small total <laughs> and still a lot of overs ahead of you yeah Good shot, driven straight and it beats the fielder. That's a beautiful shot. He presented the full face of the bat to the pitch of the ball and that was driven back past the baller for four. So the score we are now 66 for one. And the sixth over that was down the leg side, that's a wide. 67 for one. I just think there has just there's been no intensity to the start of the Ricket Vic uh, defense of this total. Body language and that's made over cover. Uh, I'm not sure this will run away for four. It will be stopped. Uh, they've taken two, and that's all they will have. But you should be able to defend whatever total, at least there. Uh, oh, they got onto the back foot, tried to punch that through the covers, got an outside edge, and he's coming back for two, and that's poor fielding. That's poor fielding. Good running by the batsman. They took the first one very quickly, turned, faced uh, the ball, and was able to come back for a second run. Yeah, textbook running there for Ravi. He turned, he, was, he had yeah. his head towards where the ball was. He didn't turn blind. Blackmail comes in again, balls. Rabbi smashes that and he's gonna be oh he's dropped! He's been dropped, there's gonna be a run out! Oh yes! There is a run out. There was a lot of thing happening on that ball. That ball was clipped into the leg side by Ravi. Uh dropped in the mid-on, square mid-on position by Sadun. Uh and then there was a mix up in the run in which ended up in Ravi being run out. He would be very disappointed because he was batting very well. Yeah. He's playing very straight. Uh, and that that was a good in good innings by Ravi. Ravi thirty-four from twenty five deliveries, so an excellent strike That's rate. That's a good strike rate. Excellent strike rate. But then speaking about uh, the, the positive approach, of course you see the difference between the Puffins and the Rickavik side. You know, fair enough you, you're defending a, a small total, total. I think that's even more reasons why you should approach this with a very positive mindset. You know, and with purpose as well. I just think the Rickavik team, their, their body language has been down. And, and they, they haven't, it's like they haven't really come to the party today. Well, they'll have to bowl very economically over maybe five, five overs to to even start to insert any pressure on the puff inside. Twenty odd runs. Target is ninety. So, twenty plus runs to win. A lot of overs in hand. So the puff inside can also take their time and just knock the ball around as well. Yeah. They're holding the cards. So. Uh, I think Prabhat is gonna come back for his second spell. He bowled two overs up front. This should be his third over. And the new batsman is Pradeep. Hits the ball hard, can be destructive, so anything loose, I think he's gonna go for it. There's been a slight hold up in play as we get on. Oh, he swung across the line with that one, but I think that was squeezed behind point. It was cut off, uh, there could be a mix up here, but only a single. He was keen. 
again, most uh, just a quick observation: uh, so many of the batsmen are playing across the line rather than playing straight. As he bowls, Ben smears that one, just chipped it over the infield, picks up a single. In the end, I, shot. it's in I the end a safe shot. As Prabhat comes in again, gives himself room, tries to slash that one through the offside, misses completely. Oh, he got hold of that one, top edge, uh, it's going to be cut off by Denarine, he's a very good quick fielder and it's only a single. Prabhat comes in once again to Ben, this time between the wicket, bowls. Ben slash, that's a beautiful shot, a beautiful cover drive, that will run away for four. Great footwork, free flow of the bat, that was a beautiful shot. And the Puffins is running away with this. 78 for two. And the score moves on to 78 for two. Ben is batting really well today. I think it's probably the, the best I've seen him bat for a, a long time. Yeah, he's been very scratchy for this season. But, um, today's day, he's probably his uh, most captain. Oh, he went across the line with that one and he's bowled. Is this commentator's curse? It, might be. it is commentator's curse. We were just giving him praise for how well he has played. Um, and the instant we, we've said that he has had a big slog to the leg side, uh, misses. He'll be disappointed with that. Uh, he will be disappointed with that. Because he, he just got himself in, he was quite comfortable. The shot before that was a perfect cricket shot, wasn't it? Yes. Uh, uh, he didn't overplay, he just timed it through the covers, uh, ran away up the hill, yeah. into the boundary. It was a beautiful uh, shot. Yeah, beautiful shot. And then he followed it up with the next one. <laughs> So we have Keenan going into coming into bat now. He's a very orthodox player, uh, very correct. I think if they, if they can get Keenan early, um, there would be optimism in the recovery. Not many more batsmen, so you know. Well, you know the saying: the game of cricket is a strange game. Anything can happen. That's right. So two or three quick wickets here, and it changes everything. So in for the puffins, we have Keenan, and we also have Pradeep. Yes, the balls. That's a short ball swung around the corner. It's a dot ball. You should see if we get the, uh, the England team to cheer in. So we're showing them how to get through the 70s at Maddie. <laughs> <Three weeks. laughs> you wouldn't stop giving me a dig, <laughs> would you? <laughs> uh, next ball short. He went across the line and is he bold? No, he missed that completely. Seems like it was going I think Freddy needs to be very careful here. He's uh, swinging everything across the line. He needs to play the ball straight. There's lots of space. It's played on its merits over his head as he bowls, swung this again, missed down the leg side, that's a wide. I think dot ball is also essential here. Yes, yeah. Keep it tight. Keep it. That one is caught. Uh, oh, there's a great effort there. Square of the wicket but it was struck powerfully, burst through his hands, and that's another four. That was 83 for three. 83 for three. 10 more runs. 10 overs left. So this would be a com comprehensive win for the Puffins. As he bowls. Struck again. Uh, it's going to fall between them actually. Fall, that should have been a catch. 
probably picked it up late, spinning over his head, they managed to come through for a single. So I can see Jakob padded up next, so he might be next in. Change of approach, uh, Keenan tucks that one into the onside, fielded by Derek. Sensible cricket. And as we speak, the sun comes out and. Icelandic sun. Icelandic sun. <laughs> Freddy to face again. As Christian bowls. Gives himself room, tries to slash that through the offside. Misses, collected by the keeper. That's the end of the over. And, uh, and at the end of the over, the score is 85 for 5. So it looks like Derek is going to have a ball. Doesn't ball a lot. I think he... He started, I think he started his cricketing career as a bowler, off-spin bowler. Okay. Uh, developed uh, much more into a very, uh, not useful, that would be uh, disrespectful for him. He's, he's a very good batsman, but he doesn't really bowl a lot. So it would be interesting to see how he goes here. He's bowling to Keenan, Keenan Bota as he comes into bowl. That's a wide one outside of stump. See Strutson again. Ball into Keenan. Oh, that's a full toss, and that's been put away over the leg side for six. Keenan does like a full toss. He does like a full toss. He sets up to play that shot very effectively. And I think that's the end of the innings. That's the end of the innings. So the Puffins has won the 2023 IPL uh, competition. They are the 2023 IPL champions. And I think they deserve this. They deserve this. They, they bowled well, they fielded well. Uh, they managed to keep the Reykjavik Vikings to a very minimal total um, and they managed to knock that off by losing three wickets. So well done to the Puffins. Uh, well done Raj and your okay. team. We look forward to uh, the Putney Cricket Club visiting us. Again. Yes, so uh, cricket continues here in Iceland. We have a visiting team uh, from England, the Putney Cricket uh, team. And they have a schedule of matches uh, with all five teams here in Iceland. So cricket continues then. Let's hope we get a better weather. It seems you know, like we're going to have a sunny week. I think it will be a very nice. That week. would be great. That would be great. Yeah, and hopefully they will bring the the baseball style to us as well. <laughs> They'll show us how it's done. <laughs> Alrighty. Thank you very much for having me. I yeah. appreciate it. I'm going to go down and see the boys and say congratulations. Yeah, go and celebrate, Raj. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the 2023 IPL champion, uh, the Puffins, and a title well-deserved, um, well-prepared. I will try to get maybe the captain, vice-captain, and a couple of the guys to uh, give you some comments and feedback on their achievement today. see one of the players uh, getting ready in the puffin mascot you 
So we have the Puffins team um, hoping to get a few comments from from the various players, the captain, the coach and the other players on their achievement here today. So we have Ben coming into the commentary box. Ben, well done. Congratulations. Hey. How are you feeling? Feeling good. Feeling good. Feeling very good. Yeah. yeah. It all paid off. Yes. It's all worked out. I've, 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 I was saying to, to Roger, I mean, watching you play today, is, yeah. it's, 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 I haven't seen you play that well. Uh, that's my <laughs> first bat, bat at crease that I've felt confident and I've seen the ball. Uh, so um, yeah, I'm pleased that I finally got was the, that, for was the final. That, was that the captain's responsibility that brought on that? I think so. There was a lot of chat in the week around what we could do, what our strategy was, and I think after talking that through, I wanted to see it through with the boys. So yeah, through yeah, the boys, proud, and you've done that. Proud of them. Um, I I made comments previously that you, you, the Puffins are probably well deserving of this win today because you're one of the better organised team. Uh -huh. Um, you started your training and preparation um, before any of the other team. Yeah. So you've put in a lot of work into this, and you know. So d d will this be the strategy going forward for the Puffins? I think so. If it's not broken, we win matches and we win tournaments. Why try and fix it? So let's keep the same moving forward into the 40 overs. Yeah. yeah. Good. Definitely. Well done. Thank you, Ben. Thanks very much. We also have Bala. Bala is also our chairman, and he's also a playing member of the Puffins uh, team. Um, Bala, what happened to your dismissal? What happened there? Well, you know, uh, as they say, you know, you hit the ball, but uh, <laughs> it's one of those things where you just have to walk out when the umpire says it's out. Yeah. Uh, I thought I hit the ball, but uh, apparently I didn't. But anyway, you know, end of the day, the team won. I'm really excited that we were able to execute on our plan, and this was the that was the that was the game to be aggressive, and we started. Ravi and I, you know, rotate the strike and keep the scoreboard ticking. We did that, and uh, and I think they continued that, and I think it worked out. So we were able to score the runs in ten runs, ten overs. Okay. So that's the plan, and it, uh, very happy, happy with the team. Everybody, you know, played their roles. I think that's that's what it's about: being organized and mm -hmm. having clearly defined roles. Yeah. Well. Well, they also say winning. Um, you know. Winning is a is a habit, um, and of course, from that you can build a momentum. There is, uh, I mentioned earlier, this this season hasn't been great in terms of the weather. A lot of games got uh, put off, um, and a few of your games got put off as well. Um, has that affected the momentum of the team, the attitude of the team going forward? Well, I mean, yes. I mean, it is disappointing when you uh, you know have to come and you know wait for rain to stop and play in rain. Uh, the only game that we lost was uh, really rain soaked. Uh, really can't take anything away from the other team, but uh, I just think that you know we don't perform as well when the ball is not sticking. You can't uh, hold it and yes. it's wet, and uh, so that was a little discouraging. But I think the team came together. You know that uh, that loss was important mm -hmm. loss because it kind of got us more focused yeah. to say to play better, and it was uh, discouraging. I think we had four matches abandoned. And uh, I think all the other teams felt the same way. This summer has been uh, one of the wettest summer in Iceland. Yes. So hopefully the fall is better. Maybe we'll get to play more exactly. <laughs> down, down the road. Yeah, exactly. but, but it's been fun. So I guess the next the next goal now is to uh, put in a good performance against the visit in Putney team from Absolutely, England. absolutely. I think we'll give them a good uh, competitive game. I think uh, that's what it's about. I think we want everybody to go out there and compete and play good cricket. And uh, you know that's how we bring more fans, more people to come and watch the game. And that's a st that's the thing that we're trying to do in Iceland, which yes. is to get more people to come and be participants. And that's slowly starting to happen. Yeah. It all takes time, so we just have to keep building. Oh, great! Well, congratulations again, again and well done. Thank you. So we also have Ravi. Ravi, come and have a few words with me. Ravi, I noticed today you played very straight. Um, is this something you've been working on and consciously? Yeah, yeah, yeah it was. It, it's actually. It, I've got so many times like getting out by playing cross the line, like try try do a lot of maneuvering. Mm -hmm. But today I like plan playing straight as straight as I can. Yeah. 
so and it, and it all and it worked out yeah. well all yeah, over considering the also the pitch is difficult also sometimes low sometimes up yeah so it's, it's yeah, a better the, choice to play straight that's one of the thing the inconsistent bounce yeah. of the pitch yeah. um, we know it does that so it's just a matter of you know taking that on board and playing the, the game accordingly and and you got you got the team off to a great start yeah. you had a really good strike rate today was that again something that was planned or you just went with the flow yeah, I think I went with the flow and uh, other team is scoring below, like require rate is below 6, so it always helps. Mm -hmm. uh, it gives you freedom to you can go along and play your game. We can yeah. dart a few balls, it's fine. So that was a very helpful also. Yeah. Like, okay. So well, everything like planned plan out kind of, kind of. Okay. Kandi, congratulations yeah, again and you. well done. Thank you. We also have with us here the coach of the Puffins team. So coach, I guess you're a happy man at this moment. Oh yeah, absolutely. Very, very happy with the performance that we actually put in today. Um, I think all of us were, there was a little bit of nerves around, yeah. you know, in the team and, um, you know, we, we, we got there comfortably yeah. in the end. I'm very, very proud of the boys. I mean, the hard work and the dedication that they put in throughout, not only the summer so far, but as well as the winter. As, as the well. winter. Yeah. And I think that, that we can see that and, and we can see the value of your, your winter commitments oh, and yeah. training. Definitely. Because it, it all paid off here definitely. today. Definitely. Most definitely. Yeah. Um, we, we, as I said, you know, from, from ball one, you know, we, we, wa we wanted to go out there with positive intent mm -hmm. and uh, just make sure that, you know, we were scoring comfortably, rotating the strike and, and making sure that we are, we are, we are in the driving seat. In the driving seat, yeah. 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 Yes. Well, congratulations, coach. Um, of course, uh, I, I know it's a team effort, yeah. but I also know I, I know you well. We've worked together well. Yeah. We've played together well. So I lot I know you've also put a lot of your leadership skills yeah. into the team yeah. and 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 encouragement. Uh, yeah. Congratulations and well done. Thanks, mate. So th there you have it, guys. Uh, just uh, a few comments from the 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 victorious team here today. Uh, I was trying to see if I can get hold of some of the Reykjavik players. Uh, I guess they're having a team chat at the moment. Um, but 2023 IPL champions, the Puffins. Uh, we also, we have Abby approaching the commentary box here. Abby, well done and congratulations. Talk to me, how are you feeling? Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks a lot, Nolan. It's hard work of last nine months coming together it's not one day practice mm -hmm. we have practice every saturday and sunday indoors people think it's one day magic it's not one day show and it's paid off and it's paid off yeah definitely. we will have to keep on doing the basic drill again just and again basic, just the basic i mean uh, uh, from from a former member of the puffins team being myself i know the work and the dedication and the commitment that you guys have put in um, but it's also fair to say that you are also uh, the, the driving force behind this Puffins team. Um, how have you kept up? Uh, what support have you gained from the uh, other members of the team to ensure that you guys were able to get things together for this championship? My always life belief is you have to give people space so they can show their magic. Mm -hmm. I never let the I call it on the field uh, heroes mm -hmm. of the field heroes yeah. you need to differentiate who are your on the field heroes and who is off the field heroes. and who is off the field heroes and of course you've, you've gathered and worked with those yeah, yeah. heroes so of the field heroes I never let them do on the field show mm -hmm. of the so you have to respect guys you can do on the field show and we can do off the field show I call okay. it the white line the white line you should okay. know whenever I in my whole life if I go in the pitch I'm a normal player. Yeah. I will do everything whatever the captain want. What they want for the board member is just a simple line. Okay, and I can I can see your teammates need you for a photo shoot, so thank you, Abby. So ladies, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us for the 2023 IPL uh, Championship. Again, the champions are the Puffins. Uh, thank you for joining us, joining us and we look forward for you joining us uh, in future broadcasts.